We're gonna do a 15 minute no repeat ab workout you can do at home as a follow along with me with no equipment. This consists of 15 sets, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off for just one round starting with a bicycle crunch. So if you lie on your back, we're gonna go opposite elbow towards the opposite knee with your hands on your temples. We want a nice big rotation of the torso. Don't worry if you can't quite get elbow to knee, just get as close as you can. I like to gently touch one elbow on the floor whilst the other elbow makes contact with the knee. That makes sure I give a nice big rotation. Make sure you're not straining your neck to keep your chin off your chest. And if you keep your jaw relaxed, it'll help keep your neck relaxed as well. Okay, next we're gonna do alternating V-ups and you've got two options. You can do the full V-up onto the tailbone or you can do just a crunch style V-up. You're gonna be going up with the body and arms every time, but alternate the legs, leaving one heel on the floor at all times. So arms above the head, engage the abs. Let's go. So if you're on this full V-up, you're coming all the way up onto the tailbone. If you're on that crunch one, it's going to look similar, but your lower back is going to be in contact with the floor the whole time. It's a slightly smaller movement, but still very effective. Okay, next, we're gonna be doing some crunch circles. So we're gonna be doing rotations one way for 20 seconds and then rotations back the other way. Arms crossed across your shoulders, gently touching the front. We're gonna do nice big circles. So round, up. Make sure you're opening the abs out as you come to the mat. Drawing the elbows close to the quads. Change direction. Well done. Now, your abs are a group of no muscles, not one muscle. So we're gonna give the rectus abdominis a rest and start working some of your transverse abs with a side plank and a little bit of obliques. So if you come onto your side, you can do this in a full side plank position, or you can opt for that half side plank. If you're doing the half side plank, you've got the bottom leg bent, but the top leg straight. Make sure you're not sinking into the shoulder. You should be actively pushing through the elbow into the floor. Your hips should be facing square forwards. I know it's tempting to turn them up towards the ceiling, but try not to do that. short rest and then straight into the other side.
Okay, lying on your back now, we're gonna get the hip flexors involved with some leg raises. If you need to, you can slot your hands underneath your glutes for extra support, but if you can, don't do that. Have your hands out to the side. We're gonna be leg raising up until the tailbone just lifts off the floor and then lowering down as low as you can get without arching your lower back off the mat. So get rid of any gap appearing here. Don't worry if you're not going that low down. If you feel like you're arching early, just stop. Just shorten the range of motion. As you get stronger, you'll be able to lower the legs further. And if you need to unlock the knees slightly, it's gonna make it easier as well. Head can be on or off the mat. Sometimes I actually prefer off the mat. It helps me keep my abs in a more locked in position. Let's finish this rep. Okay, I'm gonna continue the hip flexes. If you straighten the left leg and hug the right knee to your chest, you're gonna isolate this hip flexor. You'll feel like it's your quad as well, but one of your quads causes hip flexion. So lift, hold, two to three counts, down, straight back up, hold. Trying to keep good posture to the spine. Keeping the knee locked out is surprisingly difficult, especially if you're getting good height with that leg. I really want you to resist leaning back as you lift that leg. The idea is that you're compressing the space between your abs, your chest, and the quad. That's why they're called compressions, because you're compressing the center. You can see I'm shaking now, it's getting challenging. All right, switching to the other side. So a lot of the time people confuse tight hip flexors for weak hip flexors. So this is a really good one. So we're gonna hug the left knee in. We're gonna be posturing upright and just lift as high as you're comfortable with without rocking the body backwards. Holding two to three counts back down. Try and minimize the amount of time you're spend on the mat so we can maximize the time under tension. Keeping time under tension during your set will give you the best results. I know it's tempting to take those cheeky little rests. Okay, lying on your back, you're gonna do some wipers, some rotational core strength. You can have your arms outstretched or 90 degrees if you're struggling for space. And you can go for straight leg or 90 degree knee, depending on how much space you've got and how strong you are. Whilst you're dropping down to one side, trying to keep the opposite shoulder pinned on the floor so it's no good if you're just rolling off. Fall your legs down to one side, but really pin that opposite shoulder into the floor. I've got my legs almost straight. Hamstrings are a little tight today to fully lock them out. Okay, now this next one's gonna look easy, but it's actually hard to do well. We're gonna do a bird dog. So if you're concentrating, it's gonna be a good exercise. And you're gonna lift opposite leg and opposite arm up. And you're gonna try and do that without overarching your lower back. So left arm, right heel. Draw the belly button in, hold for two counts. Bring it in. Then left leg, right arm. So it's tempting to let your stomach sink down. You wanna keep your belly button drawn up, your back leg glute engaged, and really want you to pull that straight arm up so that the bicep is in line with the ear.
Okay, lying on your back. I'm gonna do a calisthenics core exercise now and do a hollow hold. Now you can do a half hollow with one knee and one knee out, or you can do the full hollow with me, both legs, both arms out. The goal is to keep your lower back in contact with the floor. If you're looking to level up your training and experience significant strength development, try my Calisthenics Evolution Plan, available as a one-off ebook and also included in the TPT Studio members area via the workout plan section. The plan includes four meticulously crafted reps and set style calisthenics workouts for optimal strength development. Each exercise includes beginner, intermediate and advanced options with video demos making it suitable for all abilities and giving you progressions to work up through. Check it out via the link in this video's description after your workout. Okay, we're gonna do an oblique crunch now. So if you drop your left knee down, Keep your right knee pointing up towards the ceiling. I'm gonna put my left hand on my right obliques, my right hand on the temple on my right side. And I'm gonna crunch that right side up as if I'm trying to touch the elbow on the quad then opening back out. I'm gonna do continuous reps. Now this is only for 20 seconds, so get ready for a quick switch. Straight to the other side. Getting that elbow as close to the quad as you can. As you can see, I'm not expecting you to get there, but that's the direction you're aiming for. Let's finish this rep. Okay, next we've got a dead bug. So it's basically like an upside down bird dog so your knees are going to be at 90 degrees arms straight you're going to be dropping opposite sides down whilst compressing that lower back flat to the floor don't try and do lots of reps just focus on keeping the core locked in as you drop opposite sides down i realize this can be a bit of a coordination nightmare if you've not done it before but i promise it gets easier with repeated attempts Brace those transverse abs. That's your corset abs that are wrap around probably the most important abdominal muscles for what you'd call core strength. We're hitting all the ab groups in this workout. Okay, onto reverse crunch now. So a bit like a leg raise, but we're gonna keep the legs fully bent this time, rolling the knees and the quads as if they're gonna to touch your chest. I'm gonna to try and keep whatever angle I choose at the knee consistent. For this one, actually the more bent the legs are, the harder it's gonna be. You're gonna to have to lift the weight of your feet as well. So if you wanna make it harder, try and keep your heels right next to your glutes. It'll be a lot more difficult You can push off the floor a little bit, but try and minimize how much you use in your hands. Okay, let's finish it off with a nice strict plank. So we're gonna go in a front plank, and I want you to really engage the glutes for this front plank. So onto the forearms. If you're struggling with a front plank, you can always do a kneeling variation. And let's go. So engage the glutes, draw the belly button in, and then I want you to actively pull your elbows down towards your toes and pull the toes up towards the elbows, almost like you're compressing that center space underneath your body. You'll find that you'll engage your abs a lot better doing that.
And that's it. That's the routine complete. Thanks so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments below how did you find it and where in the world you're following along from. Don't go anywhere. If you've still got energy, why not try one of these two workouts right now? And I'll see you in one of those.